day and thank you for watching the ACS Library. My name is Kyle and I aim to help you prepare for the private pilot checkride for free in under 5 minutes a day. Today's video continues in covering meteorology and weather theory. We will be covering the winds. Changes in temperature due to uneven heating of the Earth's surface lead to changes in pressure with higher temperature creating lower pressure. These changes in pressure, in turn, lead to a complex system of never-ending winds. Convection is defined as the upward and downward movement of air. Warmer, lighter air expands and rises as colder, denser air is pulled down. Horizontal convection is what we know as wind. There are three forces affecting the direction and speed of wind. They are pressure gradient force, or PGF, Coriolis force, and friction. We will use a surface analysis chart to explain and present these concepts. I provided a link explaining how to read a surface analysis chart in the video description in case you've never seen one. Pressure always moves from areas of high pressure to low pressure. Because of this, there is a force known as pressure gradient force which travels perpendicularly across isobars from high to low pressure areas. If this were the only force in effect, then the colder, denser air of the poles would be carried towards the equator, heat up, rise, and be pushed back to the poles, creating two huge circulating convective currents. Because of the rotation of the Earth, an effect known as Coriolis force deflects winds in the northern hemisphere to the right and in the southern hemisphere to the left. Coriolis force increases as one travels towards the poles. If only PGF and Coriolis force existed, winds would travel parallel to isobars, with the lower pressure to the left and high pressure to the right. This is what is seen above the friction level at higher altitudes. At the surface, however, friction comes into play, reducing the effects of Coriolis force. The greater the friction, the slower the winds, and the slower the winds, the weaker the Coriolis force. Terrain such as forests will slow the winds much more than an ocean would. The greater friction does not decrease PGF. This throws off the equilibrium, and the greater pressure gradient force pushes the winds to the left towards the lower pressure zone at an angle dependent upon the friction of the surface. Winds will be carried left at an angle of roughly 10 degrees over water, with that angle increasing as the surface becomes rougher. Winds directly adjacent to low pressure zones blow counterclockwise and up, while they blow clockwise and down around a high. Because of this, rising air around a low pressure zone is typically associated with updrafts, cloudiness, and precipitation, and falling air is associated with an opposite effect. Now that we understand how wind forms and acts, we must discuss the different types of wind. The jet stream is a narrow band of strong winds blasting through the atmosphere at a level near the tropopause. Valley winds form in valleys as the air near the surface cools, falling into the valley pushing the warmer air up the slopes. Mountain winds are the opposite of valley winds really. As the surface of a mountain is cooled, the cold air cascades down the mountain face like a waterfall. Catabatic wind describes any wind being carried down a slope as a result of the incline. Mountain winds would fall under this category. A land breeze occurs at night when cooler air from the land flows toward the sea, and a sea breeze occurs during the day as the cooler air from the water returns to land. Wind shear occurs when air currents of differing velocities create friction or shear between them. Inside the shear zone is a nasty mix of eddies and whirls. Avoid this stuff if at all possible. This concludes today's video over winds. I hope that it's been helpful. As always, thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, I hope that you may like it or share it along to someone else who may benefit. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and make sure the bell to the right of the subscribe button is activated so you'll get notifications about future videos. Feedback in the comments or messages is always greatly appreciated. Thanks again and safe flying.